Hey everybody, it's GliderCat and it's time to play. In this video, we're going to take a look at a game called Crowded Blue Dot. It's been available in early access on Steam for a while now, and at the time of this recording, there is a free demo available that you can download and try out the game. Uh, I picked up Crowded Blue Dot on sale a couple of months ago. I think I got it for under $2, as I recall. And it's uh, well worth that price and more, in my opinion. So as we usually do in these first look videos, let's take a look at the official game trailer. And while that runs, let me read some of the Steam game description for you. All right, here we go. Crowded Blue Dot is a city builder game where you produce various items and grow a city from a small village to a metropolis. It's not easy to grow the city. Manage the happiness of the citizens or population growth will decline and your city will be paralyzed. Food production is also important. A large city needs a lot of food and if production doesn't catch up with demand, people will starve. Population growth also depends on happiness. If people are happy, the population will explode. If people are unhappy, your city will be ruined. Provide six different cooked foods and provide services such as education, healthcare, security, to increase your city's happiness. Okay, the trailer is kind of basic in my opinion and the Steam description I just read is kind of basic too. So why am I featuring this game on the Glider Cat channel and what, if anything, makes it different from the hundreds, literally hundreds of other city builder games out there? Well, let's dive in a little bit to learn more about Crowded Blue Dot. So when you first start playing the game, there's a tutorial that walks you through the first several things you should be building in order to get your city off to a good start. Now, one of the things you'll notice right away is that there is a lot of information being displayed that kind of clutters up the GUI, in my opinion. Now, it's all good information to see about your city, but I do think it would be better if you could hide or minimize some of the information displays. Now the tutorial window off to the right is really the biggest offender here, especially since that window sits on top of anything that happens to overlap it. Now, fortunately, however, once you finish with the tutorial steps, that window disappears and you can get rid and get that part of the GUI back. Now, to be fair, even though at first look, the GUI can look a bit cramped when you first start playing, uh, it is something that I got used to pretty quick and it didn't really bother me after about 15 minutes of playing. So keep that in mind, you know, you're making some first impressions off of this. But uh, again, as I played it after about 15 minutes of playing, all of the, what I consider to be GUI clutter kind of faded into the background and uh, wasn't really a problem for me. Now the game is still in early access, so I am hoping that this is something that game developers uh, improve in future updates and make it a little less cluttered or make it so you can kind of minimize some things. Um, but again, it wasn't a huge inhibitor to my, to my fun playing the game. Now, while we're looking at this screen, it's worth noting a couple of things. Here you can see all the products that your city can produce, and there's a fair number of them. And you can either produce these yourselves and or you can purchase them through trade. Now, one of the things that I really like is that with a few exceptions, each of the products you see listed here are end products that you'll be consuming directly as you grow your city. So in other words, there aren't many intermediary products that exist just to lengthen your production chains. So for example, uh, wood is used to make planks you're still going to need to be using raw wood for construction. So you need to keep a supply of that handy in addition to the planks. Now the same goes for wheat. It can be consumed directly by your citizens. You don't need to mill it first and it can be used to make bread. So I'll eat that too. So I just like that because I'm not crazy when a given material in a game only exists to be refined into something else. I like it when each material has more than one use. And again, in Crowded Blue Dot, most of them do. So the other thing I really like about the game is, as you can see here, you are able to set the production limits for each product in the game. So for example, we can see in this display that just about every product listed starts out with a production limit of 3000 units. That means once you've got 3000 units of that product in inventory, your city will stop producing you know, that good. Now you can set these values individually, however you want, or you can set the value for all the products at once. So that's a bit of control I think is kind of cool. Uh, the other cool thing I'll mention is that all of your warehouses in the game share that same inventory. So it's just kind of like they're virtually all connected. 
So that means workers visiting one of your warehouses will be able to retrieve any product stored across all of your warehouses. So again, that greatly simplifies managing the location of items in your inventory as your city expands geographically. So this means you don't need to make sure you have wood planks stored in a warehouse that is close to where you're using them. You just store your wood planks in any warehouse and then place another warehouse near where you're going to be using them and your workers will to get them from that second warehouse, no problem. All right, Crowded Blue Dot has a tech tree that you're going to need to work through in order to keep your city growing. You can take a look at that here. You don't need to build any special research buildings to do the research. You just pick from one of the research projects that are currently available to you and then spend some money to purchase the research. Uh, it runs on a timer and then once the timer runs out, you will have, uh, you will have uh, accomplished that research. Now, some of the research projects won't be available to you right away until your city reaches a certain size, but it's all pretty straightforward, pretty clear, pretty easy to understand. Now, the user interface to this game, as I mentioned before, it may look a little simple, but the developer has created a bunch of features that help you manage every detail of your growing city. We saw earlier how you can manage your inventory and set caps on how much of each item to produce. Here, if you look to the left side of the screen, you'll see the labor assignment window, or at least that's what I'm calling it. And this window lists all of the different job classifications that are currently up and running in your town. And as you add new businesses, this list will increase and it'll, it has some paging there at the bottom. You can see a little arrow pointing to the left and right that allow you to scroll through all the different businesses. Now in this window, I can tweak where I want people working by using the up and down arrows next to each job classification. So for example, I can see at the top of the screen here that I don't have any wheat in storage. So I want to increase the number of workers doing farming. I can reduce the number of workers doing some other things and then reassign them to farming to hopefully shore up my wheat production. And while we're looking at this screen, you might also notice there's numbers displayed on top of each building. Now those show up because I've toggled an information overlay that shows how many people are in each building along with the maximum number that I've specified should be in each building. Now those numbers will only be different if I'm short on workers. So I can set a building for 10 workers, but if there's only eight available, that's going to show like eight over 10. So that's what that's all about. And there are a few information overlays like this in the game that you can toggle on or off as you wish. And it's just another example of all the different controls and information that the developers put into the game to help you monitor and manage your city as it grows. I think all that detail is actually really cool. And for me, it really helped me to stay engaged in the game as I played. Um, it wasn't kind of a sit back and just relax type game. I mean, it's not hectic, but all that extra information and little things I can kind of tweak helped me, uh, helped me stay in the game. Now, another major thing you're going to be doing in this game is trade. There are times in the game where you need materials that you can't make yet. And in those situations, you're going to need to trade for them. Okay, here is the trade screen. The way it works is you set the amount of items you want to buy or sell in the top left of the screen, then click either the buy or sell buttons to the right of each product. And it's really that, that easy, that straightforward to buy and sell items. Naturally, you know, you're going to buy an item. It's going to cost more than what you get if you sell. That's pretty common in, uh, in most games. So, and then you can see your bank balance up in the top right corner of the screen. Okay, so we just went over a bunch of the game mechanics in Crowded Blue Dot, and there's more of those mechanics that I didn't cover that you can check out if you pick up the game or if you try out the free demo on Steam. Now though, let's talk for a moment about how the game plays overall. Now in my playthrough, I first went through the tutorial and it was super easy to get up to speed with how to play. The controls are all pretty intuitive and I didn't really have any times where I was scratching my head trying to figure out what to do or how to do it. Um, the first big challenge in the city that I started had to do with tools. Now, most, if not all of the workers in your city are going to require tools in order to do their jobs. If you run out of tools and you likely will in the early game, especially, you're probably going to run out of tools because you can't manufacture them. Uh, if you run out of tools, your workers will keep working, but they will do so at dramatically reduced efficiency. I'm talking like one quarter of the efficiency. So 25% or less efficiency doing their work without tools. Now, as you play, you'll really want to keep an eye on your tool supply and purchase more through trade. 
uh, to try and keep all of your workers well supplied until you can actually make tools yourself. And you have to work through the tech tree and build some buildings and refine ore and all that kind of stuff before you're going to be able to make tools yourself. And it takes a while to get there. So early on, again, you're going to need to trade in order to, to uh, acquire tools. Now, in my playthrough, I didn't pay enough attention to this, and I started to enter a death spiral where, because of a lack of tools, my production of goods started to rapidly decline. And since my production of goods was stalling, I had very little resources left over to trade for tools beyond what all my citizens were consuming. So let's take a look at some sped up gameplay as I go through this death spiral of tools and you can watch it kind of creep up on me and then take hold as I played. Now that number in parentheses I highlighted is the number of workers that need tools or the number of tools that I'm currently short. So tool starts out as 100% and everything's good. Everybody's got tools, but gradually I start coming up short on tools. Now, as soon as I notice this, I keep trading to purchase more tools, but I'm falling further and further behind until at one point, less than half of my workers have tools, which is super duper bad. And my production is barely keeping up with the consumption of my city. So it's not all about tools. They also need bread. They need everything else that I'm making, all the food and wheat and all that stuff. So in the end, I did manage to recover. And eventually I completed the research required to start producing my own tools. So I didn't need to keep trading for them, but it's a good example of one of the things that you need to keep an eye on and manage as you play the game. And it's kind of one of the key, um, key aspects of the gameplay here, kind of what makes it fun. Now for me, this was a ton of fun and I really enjoyed working my way out of the death spiral. I enjoyed that I was able to work out of it and it wasn't just like a death sentence. So, uh, you do have a lot of different levers and you know, you apply some creativity, you can get yourself out of these situations. Now this happened to me again, but with a different product during my playthrough, but I won't ruin the surprise for you. And I'll just say, you need to keep an eye on your inventory as you play this game and manage your resources. You can always pause the game, take a look around, reassess what you need to do, reassign the workers like I showed uh, just a little bit earlier to shore up production of the products that you're short on or that you really need. And then, uh, and then you've got that trade available to you too. So if you're short on food, maybe you can sell some tools or sorry, you can sell some, maybe not tools, tools you're always going to want, but maybe there's another product like wood or something you can sell and get some food during the winter. So you've got a lot of different things that you can use to, uh, to, to manage. Now to sum up, I say crowded blue dot is a unique little city builder. It offers a bunch of different levers, as I mentioned, and information displays. Uh, that allow you to manage the growth of your city. Now the game mentions that you can build a metropolis with a population of over 10,000 people. Now, I haven't gotten that far. So far in my playthrough, I'm up to about 2,400 people. And again, I've had a ton of fun growing my city to the size and I'm gonna keep playing because I wanna see how far I can get. And as you level up your town or get more people, uh, your town will level up to different statuses and that unlocks more research and, and things. So. Um, so there's an incentive to keep keep your town growing. Now I'll mention that the, rap, the uh, maps are randomly generated. I'm not sure if they're infinite or not, but you'll have plenty of space to build your metropolis as you play. I didn't have any issues. In fact, I got up to what I say, 2,400 people or so, and I barely expanded on the map. So I was kind of surprised at uh, how big the map was or how much you can get done in a small portion of the map. Now, as with many games that I feature on the channel, there is a lot more than first meets the eye with Crowded Blue Dot. I'd say if you're at all intrigued by what you've seen in this first look video, then I would highly recommend you at least check out the free demo on Steam. Again, I've really enjoyed playing this game. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of the game. I picked this up myself, um, like I said, a couple months ago. I just finally got around to playing it. I've played it for about five hours, and again, I've really enjoyed it. If you want to learn about more new and upcoming games, I highly recommend checking out my first look playlist. I know you'll find more games you're interested in inside that playlist. And I add new games just about every week. So check it out. And with that, this is GliderCat saying thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.